cool and keep your stainless steel cool. <laughs> Well, we've got ourselves here a roughly four foot by four foot sheet of 40,000 302 type stainless steel that I'm going to turn into an evaporator for making maple syrup. And I told my buddy about a year ago that I'd make him one, almost two years ago now. So I'm getting ready to cut the stainless steel for the evaporator pan. I've already marked it. This is my simple drawing. I need a 21 and 3 eighths this way and then I needed about 39 inches in the other dimension. I, the dimension I was asked for was 21 inches but I'm going with 21 and 3 eighths because my intention is to leave 3 sixteenths out each end of the metal and that way I'm going to, I'm going to join the pieces together and I will be welding them with the settling torch and with the lips of the stainless steel sticking out should be enough that I don't need any filler rod and I will just melt those two edges together. That's the plan. Yes, it's, uh, it's cold in here today. So minus 10 outside. So I've got my uh, electric space heater going. <laughs> I can use it, but the main thing I'm doing is I'm trying to keep my camera warm so the batteries don't freeze. Go ahead and try to make the cut. This is jigsaw. Axon blade on the stainless steel. I think I'll get my air muffs. Making the cut really well. I won't bother to show any more of that. That's pretty well perfect. Okay, so this is the pieces that I need for the ends of the pan piece over there. So, this is 8 inches, 8 and 8 is 16, and 8 and a half and 8 and a half is 17. So there's our 17. And again, I've added an extra inch and an extra inch in order to be able to bend that the end piece over as well to stiffen it and on the outside we're going beyond 5 8 because we're going to bend that 90 degrees so that that one so that when the pieces come together it'll be this seam here that this will be bent straight up and it'll sit against It'll fit against this edge. This is already 3 sixteenths of an inch long. That piece will fit in there and it's going to stick out further than this. Unless I trim it. But I, I've cut it long. I've, I've made it long here 5 eighths of an inch wide so that I can bend it. Um, I may cut it off after I bend it. But I, I, need, I, need that, I need that length in order to make it bend. We cut this down the center. So you got one half, one end here, one end here. So ready to make those ready to make those cuts. 
Here we go. Now water. I'll spray it on there because one of the keys to cutting stainless steel is to keep it cool. Keep your tool cool and keep your stainless steel cool.
I won't bore you with these multitude of spot welds, but the basic technique is to go all the way around the joints, both ends, clamping very close to where you want to weld and putting a spot weld about every half an inch. At that point, then you can remove the pliers and then fill in the other uh, unwelded spots until you've got all the seams welded. It's very tedious. But if you try to weld a continuous seam, instead of fusing together, the two metals being as thin as 40 thou, they actually separate apart. You might be able to weld a continuous seam if the, uh, if the two metals were 100 thou or more each. I've used that technique welding uh, heavy exhausts, and uh, it's, it's actually easier to weld the heavier stainless steel than it is to weld this, uh, this very thin stuff. Well, proof of the pie is in the pudding, as they say, and no uh, welded tank would be complete without a test to see if he's waterproof. So let's check this in. Well, it's definitely leaking in the corner over there. Pissing down the bottom there. Alright. Definitely leaks there. I think it's around the wall for the This concludes the end of my buddy's evaporator pan build. Um, finally, no leaks. Kind of tipped up here. No leaks. Originally, the two seams came together and I, I welded them using vice grips, pinch, pinch, pinch and welding them out using any filler rod, but in the end I found I just couldn't get I ended up with peaks and valleys and I just couldn't get a, a perfect uh, seal all the way across. So, go the other end here, no leaks. So what I ended up having to do was I ground all those welds down more or less smooth and then uh, using gravity again. So when I was welding the, the seams without filler rod, I was allowing gravity and I was welding this way. But when I used the uh, when I used the filler rod, I set it on a chair and I welded it this way. And I went around and again gravity's settling the puddle in and I went around and filled every square, every single inch of all of those joints three weld joints at each end. Finally that did it. I can end up using three sticks of filler rod just to go back over all the, all the, the entire surface and get a welder. But anyway it's pretty good. Hopefully my buddy's happy with it and uh, it helps him with his maple syrup which is not that far away. It's uh, almost January. He'll probably be making maple syrup uh, last week of February. It'll be here before you know it. Anyway, there's quite a bit to this build. First of all, I ended up uh, I ended up adding this. Uh, I welded on this this brace to to the uh, the bending brake that my dad made 25 or 30 years ago, and put this in to prevent the uh, the center here from from kicking back. And and you saw in the video it was making some pretty nice bends. So I'm happy with that. Happy with my bending brake nods and I'm happy with this pan and 
Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Take care. We'll see you on another one.